Hello and welcome to interest.co.nz. I'm Gareth Vaughan with another of our double shot interviews where we talk to CEOs or politicians or people of interest. And I'm joined um, this time by Stephen Wilkinson, who is the CEO of Broadlands Finance. Stephen, thanks for joining us. Um, welcome to interest.co.nz. Thank you. Um, look, now just a, I guess a, a quick bit of, of, of background. You, you joined Broadlands um, earlier this year, mm -hmm. um, but you've got quite a, an extensive uh, background um, in, in the finance company sector. Can you just give us a, a brief rundown on, on, on that? Certainly, I've been in the industry for 40 odd years, you can tell by the grey hairs I guess, and uh, I've had quite a, a range of experience from commercial lending, consumer lending, I've worked for the car industry for a short period of time, and um, I guess most of that time has been in banking and finance. And look, um, Broadlands um, has been a consumer lender, it's been there for, for quite a while, um, obviously Tony Radisic is, is your owner and, 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 and key man other than yourself. Um, what's, uh, what's the market like out there at the moment, I mean are you guys actively lending or are you, are you, are you contracting your book down, how, how are things going? Yeah, it's a good question, I, one of the reasons I joined Broadlands, in fact there were three reasons I joined Broadlands when I was offered the opportunity. Number one was it's very clear to me with what's happened in this industry in the last uh, probably three or four years. There has been some opportunities that have opened up. There's been a number of finance companies that have fallen over and certainly there's a niche in there, in my view, for people to lend into that, particularly that middle New Zealand uh, market on consumer, uh, consumer financing particularly. I think the second thing that's made it very, uh, very good for me in terms of joining Broadlands is, is the fact that it's very clear now with the regulatory environment that we've got in place at the moment that... Um, it's becoming more and more difficult for people to be in the space and, and Broadlands has spent a lot of time and a lot of investment in getting the regulatory requirements right. And I guess the third thing, as you mentioned, Tony Radisic, I mean Broadlands is one of those businesses that has, uh, has survived the last 15 years, and particularly the last three or four years, and I think as a result of that they've learned a lot from that experience and with a supportive shareholder in place and a very strong balance sheet, we think we're in a very good position to move forward with some confidence once the market starts to improve. And so, so what are your plans? Um, where do you, um, where do you, you, you see yourselves continuing um, raising retail to venture funding? Um, you, you, you've been talking to banks about, about funding, mm -hmm. uh, how's that all going? Yeah, well I guess there's two sides. In terms of our plans on the, on the, I guess on the asset side of the balance sheet, it's very clear to us that Broadlands has historically been a third tier lender. Uh, we now look to, are looking to move more into that second tier market, particularly around consumer lending and small business lending. We see this real niche there. Obviously to do that we need to fund it. We've got a strong balance sheet with strong uh, shareholder commitment obviously, but we need to complement that shareholder funding with uh, additional uh, funding lines. We have a debenture model in place, which I think it's fair to say we're not expecting a lot out of that in the short term, but we see you know, that will grow as the, as the New Zealand public become more, uh, I guess more, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, they feel a little bit better about the debenture model as a, as a whole. And then obviously we want to complement those two funding lines with a third, third funding line, which is really wholesale funding. We've talked to some of the banks at the moment, the banks don't have an appetite for uh, finance company lending. Um, I think my view of the banks is very simple, they'll lend us the money when we don't need it I guess, so it's just going to take a bit of time for them to get some confidence in the sector. We've moved offshore and we've used some contacts we've got offshore and we just recently put in place um, I guess some form of funding mechanism in Japan that may well bring us some money out of there. So we're looking forward to seeing how that might evolve over the next month or so. And Japan, I mean, that's that's obviously an interesting move. Um, can you just tell us briefly, I mean, how, how why Japan and and how that came about and what sort of investors you think you, you might attract up there? Yeah, no, well, it wasn't really why Japan, to be honest. It was really just a part of a strategy of looking at a number of uh, parties that we'd spoken to in the past about where the opportunities were to raise wholesale funding. And Japan just happened to be one of those markets. We've dealt with a... Um, an investment company in, in uh, England that has uh, dealt with this before. They came to us with an opportunity and said, look, we think there's an opportunity to get some money out of high net worth individuals in Japan. They put together a structure over there and that structure is now in place. And we are hoping that uh, that might well drive some business through us, uh, through our debenture funding model that we've got in New Zealand at the moment. So that's what we're sort of hoping will happen. We expect the first flow of that to start to come through late August, early September. So will these be just sort of regular um, Japanese individuals, I guess maybe wealthier than average ones, um, who are interested in, in opportunities to earn, I don't know, 10% or whatever it is in, from, from, from New Zealand? Well, you know, you're obviously aware that uh, interest rates in Japan are very low, yep. so I, I guess we're pitching, a, we're pitching a, a, an offer to them that is pretty attractive to them, bearing, bearing in mind the, the risk of, involved with that. So from, from, that, from the feedback we've had to date has been very clear that there is a, a move by a lot of high net worth individuals in Japan to start moving money offshore because of what's happening up there at the moment. And I guess we'd just like a little small share of that and hopefully the structure will allow us to get that. How, how much do you think you might you might get from there or would you like to get from there ultimately? Um, we don't have a big, I mean just broad terms, I mean um, 
Broadlands is not interested as an organisation in, in going from boom to bust. I mean, we've worked very hard to preserve our current, uh, our current balance sheet. We, we see steady growth over the next two or three years where we perhaps double our, our book and we've only got a $32 million book at the moment. So we're not looking for great, uh, great growth. So from that point of view, I guess, we'll be looking to fund that through those three sectors I've talked about before, which is shareholder funding, debenture funding and, 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 and some offshore funding, uh, whether it be through Japan or other, uh, other structures we're looking at at the moment as well. So in real terms, if we could get 20 to $25 million over the next three years out of that structure, we'd be very comfortable with meet our objectives in terms of what we're trying to achieve. And you've also mentioned to me previously that um, there's a possibility that you, you might look to talk to some KiwiSaver fund managers, see if you can spark any interest from them. Um, mm -hmm. Have you done that yet, or are you still looking at that, that, that option? No, I mean, the key to this business quite clearly as we move forward is funding. So, you know, we keep, we're keeping all our options open. I guess at the moment our, our concentration is on the getting our prospectus into the marketplace and, and attracting a level of retail support. Obviously, we've got the Japanese funding model in place, and we'll just continue to talk to other parties. And, and KiwiSaver is one of them where we think you know, there is a potential opportunity for some of those KiwiSaver funds to have a fixed term um, component to their books, you know, around that sort of 9 to 10% interest rate. So we'll keep talking to people, and because the, the key to our business, we, we obviously see the we see the, um, the opportunity on the other side, but we've got to be able to fund that. And the good thing about the business model we've talked about is we're not trying to be silly in terms of astronomical growth, it's just steady growth, and, and over time I guess the opportunities will come from there. And I guess the other thing is w there may well be opportunities for acquisition as well you know, over this next period of time as, as our industry continues to rationalise. And look, I mean obviously we, we've, we've had this huge fallout in the, in the finance company uh, sector in the last five years or so. Um, I guess in terms of um, the retail debenture funding model to, 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 to keep things going um, in the years ahead, it, it, do companies like Broadlands who have come through that, um, uh, you know, obviously survived, still here, do you have to think out of the box a bit in terms of funding now? I mean, is this, this is part of the reason, obviously, why you're, you're looking at Japan and possibly KiwiSaver, that type of thing? That's a very good question you raise because I think that the issue that, if you look at most of the, the, the finance companies that have fallen over, apart from maybe the quality of their assets, most of them have had a single uh, stream of funding. And I think that's one thing that we would have all learnt out of this last exercise, that it's important to have a diverse range of funding lines so that if one's, one dries up, you've got another one available to you. And I think that's probably one of the big lessons that our industry should have learnt in the last three years. If they haven't, well, they should have. And obviously, look, with Tony Radisic there as your, your shareholder, you've got one strong owner. Um, he is um, committed for the long term? Oh, well, the one thing I'll say about Tony, he's done what a lot of other directors and shareholders haven't done in our industry, and he's, he's put his money where his mouth is. Very clearly, Tony is committed to the business. You'd have to say, if you looked at it from a purely financial model, you'd wonder why we'd continue with a debenture funding line. It's very expensive, the compliance and the regulatory authorities are very very tough on that uh, that particular structure. So it's very clear to me that Tony's very committed to the business in the long term, and I think he's demonstrated that not just in terms of what he's done to date, but in recent times he's spread his investment over a much longer period of time just to give management a bit more security around the, the I guess, the, 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 the basics of the business more than anything else. And look, you talked about moving from sort of third tier lending up to second tier. Can you just explain um, what you mean by that? Mm. What, 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 how do you see the differences and, and where do you see opportunities for, for Broadlands as a, as a lender in the future? Yeah, that's a very good question because people do get a bit con confused as to what is first, second and third tier lending. I guess the easiest way to explain it is probably by way of interest rates. And, and if you take third tier, which is really the bottom end of the market, that's predominantly 25 to 35 percent interest rates in broad terms, and you'd find the instant finances of this world are in that in that model. Second tier, to, well, first tier is probably 12 to 18 percent, and you've probably got the banks in that model as well. And then second tier, which is really where we're trying to position ourselves, is in that 18 to 22, 23 percent mark, and it's predominantly second. What we what we call middle New Zealanders, New Zealanders that don't quite meet the bank criteria or find the banks difficult to deal with. They're looking for a quick, easy answer, um, and they're generally people that are working, have stable, you know, stable surroundings around them, and and some of those people may have made some mistakes in the last uh, three or four years just through the availability of credit, and most of them at the moment we see are actually trying to um, trying to repay debt as opposed to necessarily borrow at the moment. That that that, that trend will change. And look, um, where, where would you like to see Broadlands in, in two or three years from now um, if all these uh, pieces come together for you? Oh, we've got a three-year strategic plan that's been set out and presented to the board and been signed off, and that three-year strategic plan clearly shows 
we're going to go through an organic growth uh, process. It doesn't mean that we won't be looking at acquisition opportunities as funding allows us to do that. But we, we would expect that we'll, we'll double our size in the next uh, three years, but that's from a very small base, a 30-odd million dollar book to a 60-odd million dollar book. And that, to me, is, is manageable without taking too many risks. And I guess from an investor's point of view, if people were going to put their money into Broadlands from a funding perspective, that's probably got to be seen as quite a sensible way to, 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 to approach the business model. And look, obviously we've, we've got a, a raft of uh, non-bank um, uh, deposit taker regulations that have and are coming in. Are you comfortable with, with, with all of those changes? Oh, I think, I think a lot of those changes, even though they're onerous when you're in that market, they are necessary in light of what's happened in the market in the last two or three years, and, and, and I don't see those getting any easier. But I guess from a positive perspective, those that are prepared to hang in there and make it happen, it does give you a competitive advantage. It also makes those barriers to entry uh, into our market uh, a lot more stringent, and that gives us probably a competitive edge that may not have been there three or four years ago. Well, look, thanks a lot for, for coming in, Stephen. That's Stephen Wilkinson, who's the CEO of Broadlands Finance, and I'm Gareth Vaughan at interest.co.nz.